All right, growers, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna talk about frost and how that relates to our fruit trees, uh, especially late frost that might come in. And really it's the colder temperatures that usually accompany a late frost that can damage the flowers or the fruits on our trees that bloom rather early. And so that's pretty much the problem when you grow fruit trees like apricots, plums, or pluots that I have here behind me. These are the trees that bloom the earliest out of all the species that you guys may be commonly growing. There's apples, pears, peaches. We also have cherries here in my yard. They definitely bloom early and they're budding out now, but you can see my apricot here is somewhere in between first bloom and full bloom. And so now this is the stage where it is certainly very susceptible to a colder temperature that might come in and damage those flowers before they even set their fruits. Now, sometimes that's not a huge deal because a little bit of damage here and there is okay because we actually want our trees to be thinned out. We don't necessarily want to have every flower turn into a fruit. We can't ripen that. We don't have enough energy in our trees to support all those fruits. So thinning them out is going to increase their size and their flavor. But for a lot of us, when we grow these different fruit trees here, it can be very difficult dealing with these late frosts, these colder temperatures into the springtime um, because you just will not get a consistent crop. You know, other fruit trees that I grow, things like uh, elderberry is probably the, the one of the most amazing. I find that, uh, you know, my gumi does really well, persimmons, the fig trees, um, you know, a lot of the mulberries actually. These trees uh, in particular, if you find the right variety, the right species, they really deal with late frost very easily. In fact, they're some of the most reliable plants I have because of that. Uh, others like these apples, pears, stone fruits, again, if you live in an area where you're so prone to these colder temperatures in the spring, it can be a problem. So we're gonna talk about right now some of the things you can do to help yourself get through these tough times. First and foremost, you could select a variety that blooms later. Uh, as an example, this here is a green gauge plum. It's called Bavay's Green Gauge. By many accounts, it's the tastiest plum you can grow. The added bonus is it actually does flower quite late. I have some Japanese plums, some pluots right there, and this is actually flowering well after those. Now, you can have a problem with pollination, but in general, these are gonna be pollinated just fine. And um, as long as you have enough variety in your yard, uh, if you can also pair green gauge with another late flowering plum, that will also be a big help. So you can choose varieties that bloom later. I know uh, I picked up a couple apricots this year because I love apricots so much. They do so well here that uh, I picked up a few new varieties that do bloom later. So choosing variety is, uh, is absolutely key. We can also do things uh, and plant our trees in areas that are typically not prone to colder temperatures as much. So if you actually can plant them against a structure, uh, evaluate the microclimates in your yard, use things like thermodynamic heating, uh, these are gonna uh, uh, essentially allow your tree to stay warmer even though it's gonna be really cold outside at night. And so that's a big one. Other growers, what they do is, and especially in big commercial orchards, they use water and they'll turn on their sprinkler system and get all the trees nice and wet, and that'll typically keep the trees warmer and actually stop them from freezing. Um, it's some kind of effect that does that. There's also people who use Christmas tree lights. You can wrap the branches <laughs> of your tree with Christmas tree lights, put it on at night, and you have a warmer tree. So there's a lot of different ways um, of protecting these trees from these colder temperatures. And it really is the, the temperature really, I think that matters most, not necessarily the frost, um, there is a, a study that Michigan State University did. Uh, I'll put the link to that in the description. And you guys can find a chart there that describes exactly where your tree is in bloom. There are different stages to the bloom. Uh, right now, as an example, my apricot is in full bloom or in between uh, the first bloom and full bloom. And so now at this point, if you look at the chart, if we get a temperature down here of about 21, I will lose about 90% of the flowers on the tree. 
Now, the further we go, these flowers here are being pollinated as we speak. There's a few bumblebees out here and they're pollinating the, uh, the flowers. And then of course the fruits are gonna set. Once the fruits set, then you get a, a stage what's called in the shuck. And so in the shuck has a 90% kill rate at 24 degrees Fahrenheit. Then if you have the fruits on the tree, um, which once the fruits expand to a larger size, they break through the shuck. Um, and then you have a temperature of only 25 degrees that will kill 90% of the fruits. So every year for the most part, I always cross my fingers. Uh, it's, it's certainly not a guarantee that I'll get fruit, even though this tree is you know, in its fifth season now, it's covered in fruit. It should produce well over 50 apricots for me. Um, it's just not a guarantee. And so I think you guys need to be aware of this aware of the circumstances, things you can do. And so uh, that right there is how frost and colder temperatures relate to our fruit trees. So thank you guys. If you like this one, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and check out my blog, figboss.com. See you guys for the next video. Take care.